Welcome to Grief Matters, a podcast that features conversations about life and death, hosted by Lori Opitz, Director of Bereavement at the Joseph T. Quinlan Bereavement Center. No subject is off limits and no topic is taboo. Please submit your questions about anything end of life, dying, death, and grief to karenanquinlanhospice.org slash grief matters. Hi, everyone. Today, I'd like to talk about the variables to our grief process. Basically, why we grieve the way we do. Um, There are a lot of different variables that contribute to why we mourn Um, Some people more than others, some people not at all, some losses to a greater degree than another. Why we miss our pet more than we miss our Aunt Susie. There's a lot of rational reasons for that, and and it's okay. So let's talk about some of those reasons. Um, Our age, how old we are when the person dies, will definitely affect um, how we grieve. If we're five when our mother dies, we are not going to understand the full impact of this loss. And usually at five years old, the worries are who will take care of me? Who's going to do my hair? Who's going to take me to brownies? Who's going to take me to baseball? Like, how will my needs be met? And if you lose your mom at 18, it it will impact you in a much different way or if you lose your mom at 50 years old. Um, Different uh, reasons for feeling the way we do, depending on our age at the time of the loss. And it depends on our emotional age also. And it depends on what the relationship with that person was. You may have a family of siblings who lost the same person, let's say mom, And they're all grieving that loss differently because of one of the reasons, the relationship they had with mom. Some of you might have been very close to mom, saw her every day, did things with her, took her places. Um, And some of you might not have seen mom or might not have been involved with mom or might have thought that mom wasn't really a very good mom and kept your distance. That will definitely play a role in the way you grieve. Um, the voids that are left in our lives when someone leaves um, will play a role in how big the loss is for us. So if that person wasn't a big deal in your life, even if it was a close blood relative, their, their leaving will not be a big deal. And the grief will reflect that. Your gender also is one of the variables that come into play in grief. And females um, are notoriously known for doing more emoting of feelings and men are for keep busy. That's not across the board 100% true for men and women, but stereotypically um, the female style um, way of coping is to feel your feelings and the male style way of coping is to keep busy, split wood, fix the snowblower, spend more hours at work. Our individual personalities, how we cope with other stressors, how we adjust to other life events will have something to do with how we cope with the death of a loved one. If Um, a flat tire throws us off our game, then the death of someone close to us is really going to be a challenge to our coping skills. Um, Where if you are able to weather all kinds of storms in your world, then coping with with grief, um, you will use the same strategies and resources that you have turned to before, and you will cope well. Our cultural background, and um, our environment in the home is also another variable. Uh, Are we allowed to talk about the person that died? Are we allowed to mention their name? In some cultures, that's not okay. Um, If a child has a loss and they're told that they cannot talk about that person at home, it will definitely negatively affect 
the way they're able to process and who they're able to share their feelings with. If home isn't their safe place for open communication, it can lead to other kinds of issues. Um, but culturally, there are customs and rituals that um, are followed that may serve us very well or, or maybe not so much, but it will affect how we grieve. Our life experiences also play a role. Is this the first time you've had to go to a wake or a funeral? Is this the first big loss? Um, or did you grow up running around the, the coffin in the living room when people were waked in the houses and it's very normal to see um, a dead person laying in a coffin? Um, going to a wake for you will not be as traumatic an event as it would be for someone who's only past experience with a wake or a coffin or seeing a dead person um, is what they've seen on TV and that, you know, the zombie comes to life um, when they go up to the coffin. Like if, if that's your only uh, association with a wake or a funeral, you may have very different feelings when you are thinking about having to go to these rituals when someone dies. So how comfortable we are with death and wakes and funerals um, will play into how we grieve. Other things like our health, do we have other stressors that we have to deal with besides just this loss? Um, do we have to deal with our own health and, and getting to a doctor and taking medication and trying to keep up with a house when our health is an issue? Or are there financial stressors because of this death? Do you have to move? Can you afford to live where you live now? These kinds of things can put another layer of difficulty onto the grief process and maybe um, break down your coping skills um, quicker than normal because of the layers that you're dealing with. Having a support system is also going to play a role. Do you feel like you're all alone and you're in this by yourself and that nobody understands? Or are you overwhelmed with the outpouring of love and support and lasagnas and mass cards and phone calls and visits that you're getting? Do you know that people are there to help support and buoy you up through this difficult time? How prepared we are for the death also plays a role. Was this a car accident or suicide or an accidental overdose? If it was, then you had no time to prepare and you are thrown into a traumatic um, situation, into shock, into a situation where you're having to maybe plan a funeral and you just saw them a few hours ago and they were fine. How you cope is affected by how prepared or unprepared we are for the death of that person. There are consequences that we have to deal with when it's an unexpected loss. If somebody has had a terminal diagnosis and went through curative treatment and it didn't work and then did palliative care and are now just living out their life with the best quality of life that they can and you're aware of this, you are psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally preparing for this loss and readying yourself and hopefully saying and doing everything you need to do before you have to say goodbye to this person. So you might not have the trauma involved when the person actually does die. But don't fool yourself into thinking that because you had started mourning before they died, because you knew they were going to die, that that exempts you from missing them after they die. It does not. We always seem to feel a jolt when someone we love dies, even if we know they were going to, because 
the fact that they have physically left this plane just affects us and we feel the effect and then we miss them. We miss hearing them, seeing them, hugging them. And so no matter how prepared we might be, there will still be um, an emotional response and that's okay. The nature of the death, another variable. Were they murdered? Did they take their own life? Was it um, witnessed by a, a lot of others? Was it a um, newsworthy event? With 9-11, um, I dealt with a family who um, felt like the whole world kind of stole their mom because the whole world was grieving their loss. And um, instead of feeling supported by it, they felt like it was unfair that everyone got to mourn um, what felt like their own personal loss because they had a lot of um, secondary losses to that um, first death, which was their mom. So the nature of the death um, has something to do with how we grieve the loss. Um, there's so many reasons why we grieve the way we do. And the important thing to remember is be true to yourself. You feel the way you feel for a reason. And the other person feels the way they feel for a reason, even if it's your sister or brother or part of your family missing the same person. We all grieve in our own way, in our own time for our own reasons. And that's okay. As always, thank you for listening because grief matters. If you would like more information on any grief or bereavement issues, including options for counseling, please feel free to call us at the Joseph T. Quinlan Bereavement Center at 973-948-2283, or you can contact us online at copewithgrief.org. Please remember to subscribe to the Grief Matters podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast.